Hello and welcome. I'm out for a walk again. We haven't done a walk and talk in a while. But it's RPG a day 2021. It's also my birthday week. And today we're doing our second word. Our first word was map. Our second word was senses. Senses. So I remember back in the late 90s, early 2000s when everybody played music during their game. You know, Duel of the Fates, Hammer of Crom, uh, Tubular Bells, The Exorcist, you know, uh, Batman. People played music because we thought that music would add to the environment and the immersion. And the, a lot of games put suggestions for how to, you know, create a sensory experience during the game. Like, lower the lights and have candles if it's a horror game. And, you know, have sense in the room to change the atmosphere use music to inspire a mood because we know that music helps set the mood scary music makes us scared exciting music makes us excited certain music just brings about certain images you hear the jaws theme you immediately just know you know you hear the superman theme and you're immediately your heart swells you hear the empire theme and you know you're in trouble you know, so lots of games and lots of people did the whole music immersion thing through the tail end of the 90s, deep into the early 2000s, 2001, 2002, 2005, 2008. Then you notice that that sort of sp sputtered off less and less. We saw announcements and, you know, games talking about sensory input and, you know, suggested soundtrack. Still, there are some games that do. I mean, Mork Borg definitely had a suggested soundtrack, and Cyberpunk definitely had a suggested soundtrack. But the whole idea of immersive environments sort of dwindled away. It doesn't seem to become as popular as it once was. Why is that? Well, the idea to use external effects to increase the environmental and emotional investment from your player slash audience is nothing new. So, you know, I'm sure we even before it became a thing, people were using music and stuff at games and props and stuff. So, the idea that games would start suggesting that, yeah, that's, that's just, you know, that's nothing there. I mean, it's not like some clever scientific discovery. It's like literally just, oh, hey, movies use music. I should use music. But then it kind of went away. And why is that? Well, it's because we began to realize that when our audience, our players were investing in the... Oh, bees. Hi, bees. <laughs> investing in the music and the lights and the props and the smells, they weren't paying enough attention to what was actually going on. Because... The way our brain processes sensory input, sensory input like music, or especially smells, is going to be processed first before the DM telling you, okay, you walk down the hall and you see 16 barbarians. So, 9 out of 10 times, players would start losing focus because unconsciously they were getting lost in the music or getting lost in the sensory experience. They were hearing the music, they were talking about the music, they were thinking about the music, the music was invoking a response and they were not actively responding to the DM saying because the DM's voice was being drowned out by the music and the way that the brain sorts information, the music and the smells was being processed first, then the guy talking would be processed second, or in some cases, if you're like me, dyslexic, you might process it third or fourth or not at all. Now you say, but movies? Yes, but movies, we are a passive audience. We don't have to interact in a movie. We just let the sensory experience wash over us visually and audibly and whatever else. Vibrating chairs. Remember vibrating chairs. Remember when the movies did effects. <laughs> like, you know, the tingler. 
I mean, yeah, I guess there's some movies that do that now, but just not the same way as that old classic fitting the pee. Anyways, I digress. And see, I'm walking around because I'm doing sensory, so I'm showing you pretty things outside. So yeah, while a movie is not interactive, we are a passive audience in a movie, in a role-playing game, we're an active audience. We're expected to react and interact with the environment. And if we are being bombarded with multiple environmental stimuluses, our brain will tend to draw, drain out the stimulus that is not important as opposed to the stimulus that is important. Loud noises, repetitive noises to our brain means potential threat, something to pay attention to, or it triggers memories. Specific smells, our brain goes, hey, is that food? Is that something I should be afraid of? Is that pheromones? What is that smell? As opposed to somebody telling us there's a skeleton in the room. Again, our brain prioritizes the information. And some guy sitting at the end of the table behind a screen talking is not as important as that loud booming music because that loud booming music means something to the brain. Well, the guy talking doesn't mean as much. So even if you're not consciously aware of it, we're starting to pay attention more to the music and the exterior environmental factors as opposed to what was actually going on in the game. So after a while, it just sort of drifted away. It's, I mean, it's not completely gone. I know there's, there's still games that have suggested soundtracks. There's still DMs that use these. We all love the 3D models and the Dwarven Forge and figures and maps. But if you're like me and you're like, hey, didn't this used to be a thing? Because I know I had like a hundred CDs back when CDs were a thing specifically for music and then how oh, hi Leah are you lost? Oh this is a lost cat. And then I just you know realized well my players aren't paying attention to me, they're paying attention to the music. I better stop using music. So I stopped. And then CDs stopped being a thing. So yeah. So anyways there's my two cents on sensory input. Don't use music. It'll just distract just distract your players. Till next time, talk to you later.